Hello Toy Collector fans, Universal Toy Collector here and welcome to the channel. Join me today from Horsell Common, the area where the first Martian cylinder arrived in HG Wells, War of the Worlds. No one would have believed in the last years of the 19th century that human affairs were being watched from the timeless worlds of space. No one could have dreamed we were being scrutinized as someone with a microscope studies creatures that swarm or multiply in a drop of water. Few men even considered the possibility of life on other planets, and yet, across the gulf of space, minds immeasurably superior to ours regarded this earth with envious eyes, and slowly and surely, they drew their plans against us. <laughs> Horsell Common sits just outside of Woking Town Centre in the county of Surrey, which is located in the southeast of England and was the area where the first Martian cylinder arrived to begin the invasion of Earth in H.G. Wells' 1898 novel, The War of the Worlds. Herbert George Wells, or H.G. Wells, was born September 21, 1866 and died on August 13, 1946, aged 79. Wells was an English writer, prolific in many genres, and his most notable science fiction works include The Time Machine, which was his first novel, The Island of Dr. Moru, The Invisible Man, and the military science fiction novel, The War in the Air. But the novel I want to talk about is The War of the Worlds, which was first serialized in 1897 by Persons Magazine in the UK and by Cosmopolitan Magazine in the US. The novel's first appearance in hardcover was in 1898 from publisher William Heinemann of London. Written between 1895 and 1897, it is one of the earliest stories to detail conflict between mankind and an extraterrestrial race. The novel is in the first person narrative of both an unnamed protagonist in Surrey and his younger brother in London as southern England is invaded by Martians. At the time of writing War of the Worlds, H.G. Wells actually lived in a rented house named Linton, which is now 141 Maybury Road in Woking. As you can see, I managed to get a cheeky shot of the house and a close-up of the plaque stating H.G. Wells actually lived there. The War of the Worlds novel has been made into various movies and TV series over the years. A radio drama, which caused panic in the US, as well as a hit musical version by Jeff Wayne, which is also a live stage show, and more recently a VR experience which is based in London. We will get to those in a bit, as firstly, I wanted to show you the actual site where the Martian cylinder landed. So here is the site where the Martian cylinder landed, although there is no official plaque on Hort or Common to state this. There were six other cylinders that landed within the county of Surrey and London. The first being the sand pits on Hort or Common, the second in the pine woods to the northwest of Chertsey Road, the third woods to the north of Perford, looking towards Adderstone, the 4th, Bushy Park, Hampton, north of the Thames. 5, Sheen, towards Mortlake, where the narrator and curate are caught in a house when the cylinder crashes into it. 6, Wimbledon Common, London. And 7, Primrose Hill, London. Wells describes how the first cylinder falls from the sky in darkness, followed by observations of it in the morning. Then came the night of the first falling star. It was seen early in the morning, rushing over Winchester, eastward a line of flame high in the atmosphere. Hundreds of people must have seen it and taken it for an ordinary falling star. Ogilvy, who had seen the shooting star and who was persuaded that a meteorite lay somewhere on the common between Horsell, Ottershaw and Woking, rose early in the morning with the idea of finding it. Find it he did, soon after dawn, and not far from the sand pits. An enormous hole had been made by the impact of the projectile and the sand and gravel had been flung violently in every direction over the heath, forming heaps visible a mile and a half away. The heather was on fire eastward, and a thin blue smoke rose against the dawn. The thing itself lay almost entirely buried in sand amidst the scattered splinters of a fir tree it had um, shivered to fragments in its descent. The uncovered part had the appearance of a huge cylinder, caked over, and its outline softened by a thick, 
scaly, dun-coloured incrustation. It had a diameter of about 30 yards. The narrative opens by stating that humans on Earth busied themselves with their endeavours during the mid-1890s, while aliens on Mars began plotting an invasion of Earth because their own resources are dwindling. The narrator, who is unnamed throughout the novel, is invited to an astronomical observation in Ottershaw, which is about three or four miles down the road from here, where explosions are seen on the surface of Mars, creating much interest in the scientific community. Months later, a so-called meteor lands here, which is near the narrator's home. The narrator is the first to discover that the object is an artificial cylinder that opens. He describes the Martians as biggish and greyish, with oily brown skin the size of a bear, each with two large dark coloured eyes and lipless V-shaped mouths that quiver and drip saliva. They are surrounded by gorgon groups of tentacles. The narrator finds them at once vile, intense, inhuman, crippled and monstrous. After a few days, this area is now busy with people. The infantry set up cordons while the general public gather to watch on, some out of curiosity, others probably out of fear. Hammering noises can be heard coming from inside the cylinder. After the Martians retreat back into the cylinder, a funnel then appears, and after surveying the area, a blinding flash of burning heat rays sweeps the area, setting fire to everything and everyone in its path. People try to run to avoid the deadly attack, but wave after wave of heat rays strikes them down. Me talking about this has my hairs on end. Just imagine what that must have been like. This whole area on fire, people running and screaming. This is only from a novel, but actually being here where this was supposed to have happened is giving me goosebumps. Just incredible to try and imagine something that horrifying and I'm standing right where it happened. So as I said earlier, The War of the Worlds has been made into various different TV series and films. The first being the 1953 film directed by Brian Haskin. And this wasn't set in the original time period. It was set in, at the time, the modern day period in America. Um, instead of having the tripods, the fighting machines that was uh, mentioned in HG Wells' War of the Worlds, it was, um, they were flying machines. Um, it was a watchable film. Um, I would probably watch it again. Um, fairly decent for its time. Um, the one good thing about it was the actual flying machines themselves made a really eerie noise. And uh, to this day, that still kind of freaks me out. So yeah, that was um, fairly eerie. Moving on to the first TV series, which was in 1988. Um, this ran for, for two seasons or three seasons from October the 7th, uh, 1988 to May 14th, 1990. The series um, is a sequel to the 1953 film, War of the Worlds. So how about that? Now, I haven't seen this series um, all the way through. I have watched a couple of them, a couple of episodes when it was on, I remember it as a kid, but I, I really wasn't interested. So um, I really cannot tell you too much about that film, unfortunately. Uh, the next film was uh, War of the Worlds in 2005 and uh, that was uh, directed by Steven Spielberg and starred Tom Cruise. Now this was a was a Hollywood production um, again it was um, based in the modern day and not in the actual time period that the novel had suggested so for me I think, again, that was a big disappointment. It was a good film. If you hadn't read the book and you don't know the story of The War of the Worlds, then, yeah, it's a decent film to watch. But because I'm a big, huge fan of War of the Worlds, um, yeah, I I would have preferred it um, to have been set in the, the modern period, the time period here. And as you can see on the tree at the moment, um, there is a sign um, saying about um, fire and stuff like that and you can't do this and you can't do that and you've got to be extreme fire caution and fire risk so yeah maybe someone should have told the martians that when they uh, started burning everything but but there you go but yeah um back to the 2005 film i, I think with by 2005 i think they had the technology and the know-how to do the war of the worlds as it was intended to be in the time that it was set with the machines that, that they had at the time the martians 
I think it would have been um, a lot better. And I have to say, this is an absolute beautiful common, absolutely stunning surroundings. I'm, I'm you know, really enjoying walking through here. And uh, just to imagine that all of this was, was on fire and uh, yeah, not not great. But again, it's just amazing to walk around here. It really is giving me goosebumps for sure. So after the um, 2005 movie, there was a War of the Worlds um, TV series in uh, 2019, and that was um, that was uh, produced by Fox, and that was um, three seasons. Now again, uh, yeah, this was modern day, and this was an absolutely bizarre take on War of the Worlds. Um, I watched it out of curiosity. I have to say, I wasn't a big fan. Um, yeah, it was just a weird, weird version of War of the Worlds. Uh, there was no fighting machines, uh, no Martians, um, so to speak, and it involved jumping back in time, which, for me, I, I, I wasn't, a, you know, too impressed with. Um, they, the, the robotic dogs, they had robotic dogs, which, again, uh, yeah, it, it just wasn't my War of the Worlds, so, um, yeah. Again, an enjoyable watch if you haven't seen or read the novel of, of War of the Worlds. So anyhow, moving on, there was a um, another TV um, series, and this was a British TV series um, by the BBC. It was a mini series. Now, I have to say, out of all of them, TV series and um, films, this was the closest. To the actual novel itself um, it was set in a period which was pretty round or well, pretty close to the, the time of, around that period set towards the end of the 19th century although it wasn't the exact time period and the reason for that being was because apparently it would have cost too much to get all the costumes and designs and everything like that in, into place so but yeah it was again it promised so much and there were elements of that TV series that I really really enjoyed but there was bits that they missed out I mean I love reading and hearing about the Thunder Child taking on the Martian uh, tripods um, that was suggested and hinted and you saw clips of it and stuff like that but you didn't see the whole thing which for me was fairly disappointing um, I felt like they missed out on that but other than that it wasn't a bad TV miniseries so at the moment, this War of the Worlds by the um, BBC, the British TV series, that has come the closest. Then in 1938, the War of the Worlds did a radio drama. And um, this was a Halloween episode of the radio series. Um, the Mercury Theatre um, on the air, directed and narrated by Orson Welles. Um, as an adaptation of H.G. Wells' novel, The War of the Worlds, 1990, um, 19, 1898. So it was performed and broadcast live at 8 p.m. Um, ET on October the 30th, 1938, over the Columbia Broadcasting System radio network. The episode is famous for inciting a panic by convincing some members of the listening audience that a Martian invasion was taking place, though the scale of the panic is um, is disputed as the program had relatively uh, few listeners. Imagine that, if you're turning into a, a, a radio drama and or you've just changed ca uh, channels and you, you listen to these news bulletins and they're saying that there's some alien invasion or Martian invasion and oh, that, that must have been horrendous. Um, so I, I, just, I just can't get my head around that. I really can't. But that radio drama then um, inspired the 1975 film The Night That Panicked America. Um, this was a an American made for television uh, drama film that was originally broadcast on the ABC network on October 31st 1975. Uh, the telefilm dramatizes events around, I mean what TV film doesn't dramatize stuff, but it um, yeah, dramatizes events surrounding Orson Welles famous and infamous War of the Worlds radio broadcast. So, yeah. Um, 
based on the 19, um, 1898 novel of the same name by English author H.G. Wells. Um, yeah, it, you know, on October 30th, 1938, which led uh, to some Americans to believe that an invasion by Martians was occurring in the area near Glover's Mill in uh, West Windsor, New Jersey. Uh, I, again, I, I'm just that just blows my mind to think that that could actually happen. That you you're listening to like one radio station, you're tuning into another one, and you've got all these news broadcasters saying that there's an alien invasion, and, and people actually panicked and, and and left their homes and stuff like that. But absolutely incredible. Now, for me, is this is this is going to be my, this is my favourite version of um, War of the Worlds. And this is Jeff Wayne's musical version of War of the Worlds. Um, absolutely phenomenal. I loved listening to this. Um, listen, listening, sorry, listening to this as a kid. Uh, my dad played it quite a few times when I was younger. Um, that was what got me interested in, in the War of the Worlds. Um, I can remember staying up at night time listening to it. I had it on vinyl. And at the time, the record player that I had had green, luminous lighting which was reminiscent of the uh, the Martian cylinders, uh, not cylinders, the Martian tripods from the War of the Worlds musical version. And it scared the bejesus out of me. Absolutely frightening. But yeah, so um, Jeff Wayne's musical version of War of the Worlds is a studio double album by American born British musician, composer and record producer, Jeff Wayne, released on 9th of June, 1978 by CBS Records. It is an album musical adapted from the science fiction novel The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells in a rock opera style with a rock band, orchestra, narrator to carry the story and lyrics that express the feelings of various characters. The album features guest artists such as David Essex, Justin Hayward, Phil Linnett, Chris Thompson and Julie Covington with actor Richard Burton as the narrator. Again, absolutely fantastic. The Eve of the War. What what a what a great tune that is. I really, really love that. And then you've got um Forever Autumn by by Justin Hayward. Now, I was really, really lucky to go and see this um on the live stage, uh down in Brighton, and this was like many, many moons ago. Um yeah, absolutely phenomenal really so really enjoyed that um they had um richard burton as the narrator at the time um he was like, like um hologram and stuff like that but then fast forward um a few years later i think it was 2022 uh, myself and georgie we went to go and see the life begins tour um up at the o2 in london and i've, I've got to say absolutely phenomenal what they can do now on stage shows and stuff like that is is just absolutely incredible so uh, jeff wayne was still um the orchestra orchestrating at the time so he was still there conducting it justin hayward he was he was still there so that was absolutely awesome to see him um we had kevin clifton from strictly um come dancing he, he was there he played the journalist and to be fair i, I thought he did a good job he was pretty cool so I, I i like that but the way they did the pyrotechnics and stuff like that and the laser beams as the heat ray and then like halfway through the first act they um had the massive martian martian tripod which was just absolutely incredible so so clever how they to get um, get to do that and to listen to it live as well it just brings a whole new different experience and and meaning to um to the show so yeah absolutely outstanding and like i say i recommend anybody who um anybody to go to go and see it so yeah and again just looking around here this area is absolutely massive it really is and to think that after a few days there was um red weed covering all this all the vegetation the greenery had, had died off or or been burnt to a cinder um yeah you know just incredible to think that all this was covered by by martian red weed and if you haven't read the novel or know anything at all about war of the worlds after a few days the martians um 
started dying off and it wasn't down to anything that we as as humans uh, could do because you know our weaponry at the time was no match for the for the fighting machines of the, the martians and stuff like that but it was actually bacteria that, that killed off the martians in the end so yeah little things such as bacteria incredible but just look at the size of this place it is absolutely massive a really huge area and it's you know it's been awesome walking around really really enjoyed it really cool so we're, we're just heading back up towards where the um the martian cylinder landed and again I, I still can't get my head around that this is only a novel that i'm talking about and it just it feels like something out of history it's just incredible and it's amazing to think that hg wells actually chose this area at the time of writing it i you know i would love to have known his inspiration behind behind writing that novel i really would incredible stuff absolutely incredible so yes there is now actually a virtual reality experience that you can take part in up in london um speaking to a friend of mine and he said that he's he's done it and he said he would love to do it again um he said it was just absolutely fantastic um the way they've done it now i wouldn't mind doing it but personally myself i i get motion sickness when it comes to stuff like vr so i don't know if i'll be able to handle that um, there are parts in it as well where you're looked in like a, um, like a small confined space, and I do tend to get slightly claustrophobic in some in some cases. So I'm not too sure how I'd uh, react to that. There are some scare moments, so if I did go, I wouldn't go on my own. I'd take Georgie with me, and I know that she isn't keen on on scare scare um, scare things. So like she she wouldn't do the houses or the Halloween Halloween Horror Night houses in um, in Universal. She doesn't like anything like the London dungeons. So um, it, it's something that I'm thinking about, but yeah, I mean, I, w I wouldn't mind, wouldn't mind doing it, um, I guess. But like I say, I, I don't want to go on something that I'm not going to enjoy because I'm constantly worried about feeling ill and, and sick. So um, if any of you um, guys have done that experience, um, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section that just to let me know what your thoughts thoughts are about it. Also, let me know what your favourite. Um, version of War of the Worlds is do you like the, the original story by H.G. Wells and the uh, musical um, by Jeff Wayne I know Matt from Zero Hunter Toys won't like the musical version he's, he's not into musicals is he bless him so uh, but you never know he might might like that or yeah and just let us know if you've seen the TV series whether you've seen the Fox one or the the BBC miniseries and here we come back into the uh, the area where the cylinder supposedly landed I do wish, though, that that someone or involved with uh, the War of the Worlds would put a plaque here to say that um, that this is where the uh, the cylinder landed. That, that would just be awesome, awesome. There is a um, monument in Working Town Centre itself of a of a Martian tripod, but yeah, here we go. Just looking around, absolutely incredible. I've so, I've, the thing is with me, I've got such a vivid imagination, and I can imagine what it must have been like back in that time, in that in that, you know, in that situation. You've got all the, the like the police and the artillery cordoning this area off. You've got, you know, general public looking on and, and wondering what what was going on and, and what it was and stuff. So, you've got a massive tree there as well with the um, unusual root systems. But yeah, just just incredible. What a fantastic place this is. And it's right on my doorstep as well. Again, this is probably about a five minute drive from where I live. So really lucky with the areas that um, that I live near where I can go out and do this kind of thing. I've wanted to do this uh, video for a long time, but it's just getting around to doing it. I'm not comfortable going around filming and, and talking and stuff like that. So that's something I'll probably need to need to get used to doing. But yeah, I, I just yeah, fantastic. Absolutely awesome. So if you if you if you're not aware of uh, War of the Worlds, I suggest a reading the novel, uh, b listening to the musical, uh, Jeff Wayne's version of War of the Worlds, and then uh, take it from there. But anyhow, I just want to say thank you very much for watching. If you are new to the channel, feel free to comment, like, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell to let you know of more content. And always, there will be more content. Once again, thank you. Appreciate your support. Take care. Stay safe. 
and see you in the next video. Bye for now.